Hey y'all, this is Notzer, and today we're going to be talking about a dynamic crosshair that is outstanding and deserves to be packaged in the base game of World of Warships. I am, of course, talking about the Nomogram Classic crosshair. I make full use of this, and I always end up having to answer <laughs> on stream, what's the crosshair you're using, Notzer? That looks pretty cool. This crosshair is single-handedly responsible for normalizing every single gun velocity into one nice clean package that you can use consistently and successfully. So it's a mod, obviously, so it doesn't come base game. You need something like World of Warships Mod Station or Aslan's Mod Pack. It is under the Dynamic Crosshair tab and there's a bunch of different options. Personally, I think the Nomogram Classic is the best because it offers every single bit of information you would ever need. Now, some of you might be going, that's not true, Notzer. The There's only two ticks there. There's only a top and a bottom. That's not everything I need. I would prefer something like the modern that scales based on the speed of the target. Well, I will inform you of a really awesome tip that one of my viewers shared with me, and it is absolutely true. And it's something that is just, ah. Uh, this is what has given me so much uplift in my American play because they suffer the most from long range accuracy because of their shell velocity. So once we install the mod, make sure you restart your game, go into your controls area, and obviously you can select the crosshair. Now, normally, you know, static, whatever, select the, the dynamic and type one. And I would forgive you if you're like, well, type one is garbage. It's not really dynamic. It just scales based on the zoom level. That's not really helpful. No, that's not helpful at all. It's crap. The Nomogram Classic is completely different from that. It considers the time slash distance of the target, which would obviously be the same thing because of scale. Uh, if you consider the speed of the shell, uh, it takes that and it includes that in the real time scale factor of the tick rate. So based on the distance to the target, you might have a ton of ticks on your screen or very little. It scales to be always useful. So the top bar is scaled to 30 knots. And if you're firing on, you know, a GK, which is roughly 30 knots, give or take, you would honestly use one-to-one -one tick marks based on the time to target. So if it's six seconds to the target, I would obviously aim at the six tick mark if I was firing on a GK that was moving from left to right at full speed. Uh, obviously, we are normalizing this scenario. There's a lot of maneuvering, a lot of consideration that you have to uh, include in your shot, but it's much easier with all this information. The bottom bar is scaled to 20 knots. So you would use this if you're uh, firing on a Minnesota or a Kansas or a Vermont, the super slow American Battleship alternative line. If they're eight seconds away, and they're a, a, a one of these slow battleships, that's where you would uh, use your tick in, in uh, relation to aiming. Now, you might be going, well, 30 knots, 20 knots. Why would you ever be okay with this? This seems to be missing information that I can't use. Well, super awesome tip by a viewer. If you make use of the 20 knot and you double it, it instantly becomes a 40 knot scale. So for example, if I'm firing on a DD that's going 40 knots, because you know, DDs end up going there, obviously 50 knot scale, ridiculous for French DDs. Let's come back down to earth and let's realize that most of them are around 40. But if they're going 40 knots and you know, let's say that they are four seconds away based on the time to target, if I were to aim at the eight tick mark of the 20 knot scale, it would actually scale appropriately for a 40 knot speed ship, because obviously 40 knots is double the speed of 20. So in essence, I have a 30 knot scale, a 20 knot scale, and a 40 knot scale, all in a nice clean package. So I'm gonna show you a couple of examples, different variety of targets. Uh, this is also great with the scout aircraft. If you've ever complained about having really bad accuracy on your scout aircraft, this is gonna absolutely transform that as well. Uh, the only thing that you need to make sure you do, make sure you enable the alternative battle interface mode. By default, it's off. You can act activate it in game by pressing Alt, but you really need it on full if you want to take the full uh, benefit of this and also everything that, you know, alternative battle interface. It's great. You should have it enabled full anyway, but you definitely need it for this. So let's take a look at all those examples and I'll talk about what I'm doing. 
really simple shot. Target is five seconds away, and we're gonna aim about at the fifth tick mark. Now you'll notice exactly where it ends up, and obviously the Republic will end up going a little bit faster than 30 knots, so we actually drop it back a little bit, but 27,000 damage. It's a five second window, and it's not one that you'll miss, but it's made even more precise by having exact measurements. Now here's an actively maneuvering Petro who is gonna turn into a broadside and I'm gonna try and lead him by roughly the amount that is described at 30 knots, but making sure to lower my lead because the target is obviously coming out of a turn. He's gonna be slower. And even then we overshot him a little bit, but we still got a really nice amount of damage with our first shot. That's the key here. First shot accuracy goes way up with this binocular. And honestly, first shot accuracy is probably the most important thing. Now, here's another follow-up shot, about five seconds. Notice he sped up, so I give a little bit more lead. This should end up being a nice little broadside, save for, let's see, the German accuracy. So yeah, really nice and consistent accuracy regardless of the scenario. In this example, we actually have two different targets. And again, first shot accuracy is really important. Because of first shot accuracy, I am more destructive, more devastating to my opponents. Obviously, the Shima's coming towards us. He turned back, you know, he was initially going broadside, then he would come towards us. Just aim in front of him based on the momentum. You'll get used to it. Obviously, you can't make full use of the tick marks in that scenario. It doesn't invalidate the crosshair. It just means you have to consider that. But the best way to fire at a target, consider the crosshair, the tick marks, and the minimap. The minimap has two bits of information when you're targeting a target. Their heading and your crosshair in real space. If you have their heading going through your crosshair, you know, a circle getting a line through it, basically like marking them out, you can very accurately have a, a good gauge of where they're headed. And considering that I used sort of initially the 20 knot scale doubled in, he was about seven seconds away, doubled it to 14, but then drew it in because I noticed that his engine was knocked out and he wasn't going full speed. Here we have a GK, roughly 30 knots. So the top tick mark, 9.5, roughly midpoint of between the nine and 10 tick, and we're aiming at the top of the hull. Especially for battleships, the largest area is the best to cover the plus and minus scale of your shell dispersion. And yeah, 18,000 near max range, Definitely first shot accuracy. And finally, we've got the Des Moines. Another American shell, slow gun velocity, but really powerful, like literally highest damage per minute in the game. Uh, but if you can land your shots, you can rack it up real good. So we got this enemy aircraft carrier. He's not going perfectly left to right, so you have to kind of scale in the shot, but it gives you a good base to work off of. And that's really important. Based on the amount of degrees that they might be turned in or turned away, you need to take that away from the amount of lead that you end up giving. And then of course, when they flatten out again, you need to draw it back out, especially when they start gaining their speed back up. And it's great to be able to consistently hit follow-up shot after shot and not have to worry about, is my shell gonna get there? Is it too slow? Oh, I don't know now. What speed is he going? All I have to do is look at my crosshair, look at my mini-map, and then put those two together into one beautiful package. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent or the most relevant uploads. You could also choose to subscribe to my channel. We do World of Warship videos, first impression, how-to, news, and review related. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you, and have a wonderful day.